Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to do a chit chat, get ready with me makeup of recreating this beautiful rainbow makeup look by one of my new favorite Instagram artists, Glitter Liss. She's outstanding. I love her work so I really was inspired to dip into some makeup today and chit chat with you guys about some really awesome things in black history and today is also a collaboration with one of my friends here on YouTube and Instagram, Minsuki. She also did a makeup look inspired by Pat McGrath, a great woman who is not only important to black history but to the makeup industry as well. So later on after this video, you can definitely check out her look as well. But let's get started and dip into some beautiful makeup and try to recreate this look. I hope I could do it justice and let's get started. If you didn't know, well, I didn't know this because I don't play tennis, but there is this beautiful tennis player named Althena Gibson. And if you didn't know, she was the first black woman to compete into the Wimbledon tennis playing in 1951. So she is really important to black history. And you guys know with everything going on, I really wanted to talk about the importance of women and black people in our history that we didn't learn about in schools, especially here in America. And we really need to educate ourselves lately on the importance on what our lives have been ruled under and how we're missing a lot of stuff in our history books. So that's why I really want to touch upon the importance of black women, the black people in history. Because Althena Gibson opened up so many doors for so many women for tennis. Because like I said, she was the first black female who competed in Wimbledon. And she didn't just compete, her competitions were legendary and remembered. She went on to win single titles in the United States and in Wimbledon. And she really inspired really famous female black tennis players like Serena Williams. In 2016, Serena Williams actually recognized Althena Gibson's accomplishments, saying and using her platform how Althena really paved the way for women like her to be where they were at today. And Serena Williams still faces injustice in the competitions of tennis. And she still has strived above that. She has accomplished so much beyond just being one of the most best athletes, not just tennis players. And she not only played tennis, but in 1963, she also showed amazing skills in golf as a golfer. So yeah, in 1963, Althea Gibson became a golfer as well. Just like a woman who inspired everyone who didn't just excel in one area, in multiple areas. And it's so awesome how black women today even acknowledge how she has made it for their lives to come so far. A lot of people forget where everything started too. Amelia Boynton Robinson was the first black female to run for Congress in Alabama. She was another person that should really be talked about. Because yes, we know about Obama being the first black president and his wife, but there's also very important people that no one talks about. Like Amelia. She organized the Selma March in 1965, which really launched her career to run for Congress in Alabama. And although she didn't win, she raised much awareness for the voters' discrimination against black people. She lived to be 104 years old. And when she died, Obama actually recognized her in a speech, saying how strong and hopeful and how great of a spirit she had and that we should recognize people like her in history. I'm using my Uma Beauty Foundation Stay Woke Concealer and my Denise Myrix Powder because it's like my holy grail lately. You know, she really inspired everybody from the black community and everyone around the world to really exercise their rights to vote because she was so against discrimination in the voting system. I bet you haven't heard of Jane Bolin. Jane Bolin was the first black woman to run as a female judge. In 1939, yes, she was the first black woman who graduated from Yale Law School to become the nation's first black judge, female judge. Jane Bolin was known to work throughout her career with famous people like Miss Eleanor Roosevelt. She also helped fight crime with young Americans and taking on their cases. 
She also ruled against prohibition officers who based people on race when well, they were on the job. She worked on very important family court cases and really wanted justice for, you know, young Americans and um, mostly families. She's a hard worker and she should really be recognized when it comes to, you know, there's a lot of people that want to be lawyers out there and she's inspired so many. Like, did you guys see that viral video that was going around where that officer pulled over this woman for the tint of her car even though her car wasn't within restricted guidelines of her tint grade and it turned out she was a judge, like a local really popular judge and he pulled her over and she was black and she didn't do anything wrong. It's just insane how black people are discriminated against and they feel like that they can't just live their lives without someone calling the cops on them or the cops just discriminating against them sometimes. Insane. Now let's talk about one of my favorite people is Daisy Bates. Daisy Bates, after moving to Little Rock, Arkansas, she started the first black female run newspaper. She dedicated her entire life to the civil rights movement in her area and really fighting against it and for women and discrimination against people of color. She was the president of her local NAACP program. She also played a huge role in ending segregations in the very popular cases in Little Rock, Arkansas of the schools towards black children. She really helped to support and fight for those children's rights. And she helped a group of nine students to integrate into high schools, Central High School in Little Rock, Arkansas. Arkansas also recognizes the third day of February as Daisy Bates Day in recognition and remembrance to everything that she has done. To celebrate her legacy, everything she has fought for, you know, the really popular images of the children in Little Rock, Arkansas, then, you know, a lot of that was it contributed because of Daisy Bates and her actions with her fight towards civil rights. Another important woman was a South African singer named Mariam Makiba. She really helped recognize or well, have people recognize the segregation in South Africa and she really fought against all the racial injustice. When she died in 2008, South Africa's former president Nelson Mandela paid tribute to her in that she was the first South African lady of song who deserves recognition. So he titled her that her name would be Mama Africa. All right, to get Glitterless's beautiful rainbow look, I'm hoping I could use this palette that I'm trying out for the first time today. If this doesn't work out, this is the Jay Kissa collab with um, e.l.f. Cosmetics to the Rescue palette with her doggies on it. But if that doesn't work, I would really suggest Color Drain because I really recently purchased this and I've been obsessed. It's so great quality, such great pigment, and very easy to blend. It's amazing. Just in case this one doesn't work, I'm gonna dip into the color cannoli, this bright blue color, and talk about Dr. Alexa Kanati because she was the first black female neurosurgeon. Like what? Doctors, neurosurgeons are on another level. I'm so bad at math. Any, I can never be a surgeon. They just astound me. But yes, yeah, she was the first black female neurosurgeon in 1981. She helped save thousands of people's lives, mostly children. She had like a definitive, like soft spot for helping and saving children's lives, which I mean, if I could, I would. But like I said, I probably couldn't. In 1989, her home state, Michigan, actually put her in the Hall of Fame for recognizing her as changing the face of medicine for all her efforts and what she's done in her 20 year career span as a neurosurgeon. That's just how bomb she was. She was also named Teacher of the Year by the Children's Hospital in Michigan. A lot to be proud of. Imagine if your daughter was one of these people who like did so much, like I feel like I would have made it in life. Like, look at my kids, a neurosurgeon did so much. I would cry every night of like how proud I am. See, there's no pink in this palette, so I'm gonna dip into the color drain. But in the US schools, we have heard about Rosa Parks, which is awesome. But did you know that someone came before Rosa Parks and did the exact same thing and who isn't was recognized as much, which is Claudette Colvin. Claudette actually refused to give up her seat for a white person when she was asked to because of segregation for the same reasons, but she isn't recognized for it. 
She was only 15 years old at the time, so why isn't her name recognized in history books but Rosa Parks is? Right? Isn't that odd? Because after she did that, her mother told her to be quiet of, from what she did. Almost like she should be ashamed. Her mother actually told her to let Rosa Parks be the one and not Claudette, which I think is absolutely ridiculous. The craziest, saddest part of Claudette Colston's situation was that the reason why her mother told her to be quiet and to not say anything to publications and let Rosa Parks be the one is because Lo Rosa Parks had lighter skin than Claudette did. And just that breaks my heart. And even when Claudette talked to publications, she was like, I should let Rosa Parks be the one, not me. And that breaks my heart. Did y'all see that video of the little girl who started crying to uh, her hairstylist saying that the lady that was doing her hair that she was ugly. This girl must have been no older than four or five years old. And it breaks my heart that these children, these black beautiful babies, are discriminated against already facing injustices like this. You know, children grow up not knowing what racism is. They are taught racism. And I hate to say it. Children don't look at the skin, the color of their skin or other people's skin. And if they do, they probably learned it from someone in their family. Cause they're like sponges and their parents are their teachers, the first teachers that they come encounter with in life. Claudette Colson's whole story just broke my heart. Another person you should know about is Marsha P. Johnson. She was an activist for the LGBTQ community and a black trans woman. She helped lead the Stonewall riots. In 2017, Netflix released a documentary talking about her death. Her story, her life, her legacy is very important for black history in the LGBTQ community. Like stories like this is the reason why I wanna draw, paint something on my face that's very uplifting, even though we're talking about very hard subjects right now. But this Netflix documentary really drew attention to her legacy and the continued violence of transgender black women today is so atrocious. Too many lives are being lost over something they don't choose to be. Like being gay, being trans isn't really their necessary choice in my opinion. Again, just my opinion. And not only was she a beautiful drag performer, but she helped the LGBTQ community, especially in the homeless epidemic with L some of the LGBTQ and the AIDS and epidemic and HIV. She really wanted to support people in her life. New York City's Greenwich Village memorializes Marsha P. Johnson's contributions to the LGBTQ community. In May 2019, they actually put up a monument down from the Stonewall Inn to memorialize her and her efforts. We are definitely not going to learn about beautiful people, trans black people. Unfortunately, like Marsha P. Johnson, we weren't taught about this in our schools. I've just been using some aqua paints for the white of this makeup look with the clouds. And I'm also going to do that to start the liner of like the rainbow on this eye. I don't know how you did this glitterless. I hope I don't screw it up. But we should also know about Constance Baker Motley, the first black woman be to become a federal judge who was also an activist. She also served in the New York State Senate. She lived a revolutionary life during the civil rights era. Constance also fought for civil rights cases. She also was working with and representing Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., one of the few black history people we learn in school in America. And on top of that, Constance won nine out of the 10 cases she represented for during this time. She was that judge, that female. Like how bomb is that? Imagine being that successful, I can't. Have y'all heard of Dr. Mae Jemison? She was the first black woman astronaut to travel to space. In 1992, her accomplishments did not stop there. She's a doctor, she's a former Peace Corps operator, and she is an engineer. Like, what? Again, how? I could never. I just paint my face and talk and turn into weird characters that are sometimes men. Dr. Mae Jemison is also part of a 100 year program to send humans outside of just the solar system in outer space. 
a system that hopefully will take, well, they're hoping it'll take effect within the next century. Putting a little pink and white highlight from Dior. Pink on the lips, why not? Take it sparkly and white highlight because, you know, it's not a cat sketch video or makeup look unless I do upper lip highlight that looks like I'm sweating from the heavens. Like everyone makes fun of my lip highlight because it's so extreme and I have such different lips and they're like, you look like your lips are sweating. And I'm like, great, thanks. I'm just here to do makeup, that's it. Now the person that we should know about is Marian Anderson. She was the first black female to perform in the Metropolitan Opera in 1955. She was also the first black female to be invited to the White House in 1986 to perform for Ronald Reagan president, Ronald Reagan himself. Also, we should know about Miss Gwendolyn Brooks. She was one of the first black poetry artists to be featured for her work. In the 20th century American poetry, she won the first African American to win a Pulitzer Prize for her work in poetry. In 1950, her work, her poems describe what it was like to be black American in their everyday lives and have it in poems that were beautiful well executed poems so it's really important to see black lives in art and history like this she mainly based her poems off of the lives of the black community in chicago where she grew up and lived also another amazing thing in 1879 mary mahoney was the first black licensed nurse in the u.s she's featured in the national women's history museum for all her efforts and all of her amazing work she couldn't work in some hospitals because of discrimination of the color of her skin in the 19th century, so she had to become a private nurse instead. Just because of the color of her skin, she didn't get to choose her job. She just had to make do, but she still was an amazing nurse. She founded the National Associations for Colored Graduate Nurses in 1908, gave the conventions uh, for the women an opening speech about it. And after the 19th Amendment was ratified years later, she was one of the very first black females women to ever vote. How amazing is that? Because even when women were allowed to vote, certain people of certain races still weren't. But US history likes to cover that up. I didn't want a lash that was like too extreme, so the lashes that I am using today are the Dollar Lash Club lashes and Robin. And with that, we are completely done with this look. Thank you so much to Glitterless. Check out her Instagram for creating this and I just recreated it on my face because I was so inspired. I love her Instagram so much. Also, again, this is in collaboration with Minsuki talking about other great moments in black history inspired by Pat McGrath. Her videos are so bomb, I'm telling you. Like she does a video talking about, you know, how harmful dolls kill is and she is just so informative and so talented. So her video will be in a link down below in the description box below. And check out Glitterless on Instagram. I mean, this wouldn't happen if it wasn't for her. I hope this was very informative, talking about really important people in black history that I thought was so interesting, informative, and stuff that I need to catch up on personally. It's just important for me to know as much as I can. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, there are a few people I could have talked about in this video. I could go on forever. Fannie Lou Hammer was one of the people that also really made it so black females could, or black women could vote with her work in activism, who also suffered injuries from personal beatings from police at the time in the 1960s. Also, Silvia Mendez is Mexican, Puerto Rican, and fought for integrating schools for children, who was also given a war by President Barack Obama, and she fought for schools in 1946. Also, Aline Johnson Sirleaf is the last person I want to mention before I go. She was the first female president in Africa in 2006. Although we haven't seen female presidents who are black in the U.S., Aline Johnson Sirleaf was elected president in Liberia back in 2006. So thank you again so much for watching this video and I will see you creators in the next one. Bye.